anything that can be written in JavaScript will be written in JavaScript and OCR or optical character recognition is just one of those examples. So in this tutorial, we will create a very simple app that extracts all of the text content from a user provided image. So let's go. We start off with an empty React application and I'm going to be using the Mantine component library to create a decent UI very quickly. Now you don't have to use Mantine and the OCR portion of this tutorial is actually completely component independent. But if you are interested in Mantine, I have a tutorial dedicated to getting you set up that I will leave in the video description. I have already imported all of the components that we are going to need. The group is a nice horizontal layout. The stack is a nice vertical layout. The text, image, progress for progress bar and the button components are fairly self-explanatory. Mantine also comes with a nice drop zone component and that module also exports the image mind type constant which can be used to filter out only images. With the imports out of the way, let's jump into the key logic portion of our application. We create the image data state variable and then a load file function which will take a browser file object and then convert it into a base64 encoded string which we then set into the image data. So all of this code is basically for storing a string and then base64 encoding a file to put into that string. Next, we create three simple state variables. The first variable is to track the progress of the current task, which will be a value between zero and one, the progress label, which will be the label for the current task, and then the OCR result, which will be the result of converting an image data to a text string. Finally, we create a placeholder for the async handle extract function, which will eventually contain the bulk of the logic of converting a base64 encoded image to a text string. And that's actually the bulk of the application logic that we will need. So let's jump into the rendering of our application UI. Now the root of our application will be a horizontal layout with a stack on the left as well as a stack of items on the right hand side. And we create this horizontal layout by using the group component. Within the stack on the left hand side, the first thing that we will have is this drop zone component. And it takes a nice prop called on drop that gives us the list of files that have been dropped and we only really care about the first file. We specify that we only want to accept image files and that we do not want to actually accept multiple files. And then within the rendering of this drop zone, we will render a simple text containing drag image here or click to select file. The other thing that we are going to render in the stack on the left hand side is going to be an image tag, which we only render if there is some image data that is present, which will be set as a part of the load file function that we looked at before. Now for the stack on the right hand side, we are going to render a button which will be disabled when there is no image data and its click is white that empty handled extract function that we saw previously. Then there is a text that is going to just be a rendering of the progress label in uppercase. And then finally, we have a progress bar that will indicate the current progress and it takes a value in percentage. So we scale our zero to one value to zero to 100. Now, once we do have an OCR result, we create a very simple stack containing the result in extra large size, followed by a text that contains the OCR result that we will render within something that has a monospace font, a black background and a nice padding. So let's jump into the browser and look at this UI in action. We have our drop zone. We have an image tag that's not currently showing because there is no file. And then we have the extract button disabled because again, there is no file. Now we can either click the drop zone to select a file or I'll just drag and drop an image file in there. Now you can see that the image shows up, which is basically a rendering of the base64 encoded version of the file that was dropped. And then the extract button is enabled as well. Now we're going to be using an open source library called Tesseract.js for doing the heavy lifting of OCR. Now a fun fact about Tesseract.js is that it is actually a port of a very popular C++ project called Tesseract OCR. And the way Tesseract.js works is that it cross compiles that C++ code base into JavaScript by using the mscript and compiler. So let's look at this library in action. Installing this library is pretty simple. We just need to run npm i tesseract.js. Now with this installation complete, we can import the create worker function from the tesseract.js module. Now OCR is a pretty processor intensive task. So tesseract.js allows us to do that work in a separate thread by using create worker. Now the create worker creates an instance of a tesseract worker and we will store that with the use ref hook and we will initialize it when the component gets mounted by using the use effect hook. There is only one option that we will pass to the create worker API call and that is the logger function which gets passed a message and if that message contains the progress, we will note on the progress from that. And if the progress is one, we map it to the string done because it looks weird to show initializing and recognizing with the progress at 
and of course we return a dispose function because it is always good to clean up after yourself when the component gets unmounted. And then for our handle extract function, we reset the progress to be zero, set the progress label to be starting. Now we will make sure that the handle extract function can only be called if the worker has been initialized. So we can be sure to get the worker ref.current as the current worker. And then we use the load API to initialize the JavaScript that will be run by this worker. We use the load language function to load the trained data for a particular language. And then we initialize this loaded English language. Now we can use a recognize function to take that image data, which is base64 encoded, and get the OCR text content. The worker.recognize function is the heart of the image to text conversion. The final text is contained within the data.text property, which we use to set the OCR result. Now I am also logging the whole of the response.data object because it contains some other interesting properties as well that we will show towards the end of the demo. And that's 99% of the code. One final thing that we need to tweak is to make sure that we cannot invoke the extract function if the worker is currently not initialized, which we can do with a simple OR check. So now let's jump into the browser and look at our final application demo. We drag and drop an image file. Now the extract button has become enabled. So we can click that and this will kick off the worker and then kick off the recognize function, which does the image to text conversion and we get the text result extracted from this particular image pretty quickly. Now, as promised, if we open up the console, we can see the full data object that we also logged and it contains a number of useful members. For example, there's a symbols member that contains detailed information about the individual characters that were recognized within the original image. And then just for fun, let's drag and drop another image into this example application we've created. And I actually got this image from the test.js source code from its tests folder. So no surprise, it works exactly as expected. I'll wrap things up there. You can find the final source code for this as well as many of my other tutorials over on GitHub. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.